you're here. It's Landman History, getting into the Constitutional Convention, a more perfect union, video 15. Let's get into it. Diving in. Use your Cornell Notes templates, kids. Always using that, that template. Good strategies, right? Listening well, reading well, getting those answers, processing, going back, pausing, rewinding. Good strategies. Now that's how you get those good answers. Let's start with the vocab. We're going to write the vocab on the left side. You've already written your title at the top. Vocabulary is as such. Here they are. Number one, convention. Number two, delegates. Number three, debates. Number four, bicameral. Kind of weird word. New one there. Number five, proportional. Number six, unicameral. Another strange little word there. So get those down. We're going to use them in the lesson. Let's dive in. Questions for the lesson. These are the big ideas. What happened at the Constitutional Convention of 1787? What went on there? And more importantly, what were the compromises that were made by these men, these delegates, that made a stronger central federal national government? Because remember, if we rewind here, and we go back to the Articles of Confederation, we remember that the kids were in charge of the house. The states had the power. And that was leading to a very weak government because there was no taxation. You only had one branch of government, which was the legislature, and they weren't functioning very well. And there was no one to enforce the law. There was no president, no executive branch. There was no court system for the federal government. The states did have courts, but the federal government didn't. So there was weaknesses all over the place. And then Daniel Shea leads his rebellion in Western Massachusetts. And those farmers that were upset about their taxation and land getting confiscated by the state governments were, were proving that the AOC was not strong enough to withstand threats from its own people. There was no national currency. There was no national money. There was no taxation. And these farmers and the rebellion, they proved that the AOC had to change. So let's dive into the Constitutional Convention. It begins in the summer of 1787. 55 delegates representing 12, 13 states meet in Pennsylvania. This includes the famous George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin. They're all there. Now, the delegates were meeting at a very famous location called Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Now, this is during the middle of summer, and they were very secretive. So they kept the door shut, the windows shut. They didn't want anyone to know what they were trying to do, which was to create a new government for America. Coincidentally, one colony, one state didn't show up, and that was Rhode Island. They decided not to come because they liked the AOC. They didn't want to see a change. So the convention has to have a leader someone to oversee things. So the delegates choose the great ex-general of the Continental Army, George Washington. Now his job was to make sure that everything ran smoothly, that the debates were happening in an orderly fashion. Now he stayed out of the debates. He pretty much just let the delegates do their thing and talk out the problems of the AOC. Now George Washington was affected because he didn't really care for how the Shays' Rebellion was sh showing the weakness of the AOC. He wanted to fix government. He was the GOAT, but he definitely wanted to see changes too. Now we're gonna see a theme start to develop here. Now in the, in the span of the convention, which is where the, the delegates were meeting, we see this, this theme coming out. You see the pictures, see those images right there? When you see these images, right? What kind of theme, what kind of idea comes to your mind, right? So these men are kind of starting to take sides. Now, there was many discussions that were going to happen that had to fix the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. These two sides started to form up against one another. Now, when I think of these two sides, I think of that David and Goliath story a little bit. Now, both sides wanted power in government because that's natural to do. But both sides needed to fix the government, and they had to all agree. So how do you all agree on something when you're kind of fighting against one another on your, on your beliefs? So the sides that started to form were the big states versus the small states. This became very clear. And then later on in the convention, we see the northern states start to go against the southern states. So think about that, write those down, and make sure you have that in your head. So this great cartoon shows that difference. You see Virginia on the left. They're the big states. 
And then you see New Jersey on the right, and they're the little state. I'm going to use this, this cartoon several times in class. It's a great visual of what this compromise is about to happen here. Now, the Virginia plan starts. So one of those delegates was James Madison. He's considered the father of the Constitution. He basically wrote the Constitution. He and his fellow delegate, Edmund Randolph, they proposed their plan for a strong government, a strong national government, and they call it the Virginia Plan. So what was this Virginia Plan? Well, they asked for the following changes. They said, we need to have three branches of government. We need a legislative, an executive, that's the president, and we need a judicial system with courts and judges for America to run well. Now, this is where the, 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 the difference started to arise. It was in that legislative branch. So the Virginia plan wanted a powerful legislature. That's a group of representatives, right? Those are your elected reps. Now, they wanted what they called two houses, literally two houses of representative men that were elected. Now, we call this in government a bicameral legislature. Bicameral, bi means two, two houses of reps. Now, why is this what they wanted? Well, we see, oh, sorry, there's a visual right there to help give you an idea of what I mean by two houses. Now, why did they want this? Well, Virginia wanted to use their population size. What do I mean? Well, they wanted power. They wanted power in government. The Virginia plan was known as a big state. So they were gonna use the one factor that they could to make their power case. The plan that they asked for was going to give them representation in the two houses. That representation was going to be proportional to their population size. Proportional means it was gonna match their population size. So in other words, if Virginia, being a big state, has more people, then they have more power in government, more votes. Does that make sense? I know it's a little tough, but that's the idea here. More population, more power in government. So this is why we see the cartoon and we see big Virginia here, because they have more people, so they are bigger in size. Now, of course, at this point, the small states, they don't have as many people, and they're looking at Virginia going, what do you mean? That's not even fair. You can't do that. We're small. You're big in population. How are you taking, taking advantage of that? Well, everyone agreed that three branches was better than one branch of government. But this proportional representation, this was kind of a worry. No, not all the states were agreeing on this idea of the Virginia plan. But Virginia, they wanted to dominate the Congress. They wanted that power over the other states. So they basically were making the argument that was like, look, we have 10 times the population that you do. So in other words, we take care of 10 times the people. So we pay 10 times the taxes to government. So in other words, why shouldn't we have more representatives if we have more responsibility? And small states like Delaware, which had very little population, were sitting there going, hey, that's not fair. We should be equal in our representation. You're taking advantage of us big states. So New Jersey pops in and they are considered the small state plan. Mr. William Patterson, founding father, proposed the New Jersey plan. Now it was very similar to the Virginia plan, but the small states were gonna prove that they were not gonna be bullied. So what did they propose? Well, firstly, they said three branches of government is good. We agree with you, Virginia. We want the president, we want the courts. We like the legislative, but we wanna make a change here because we can't be bullied. So the New Jersey plan also proposes a legislature with a difference. They want equal representation. They want one house legislature called a unicameral legislature. That means one, one house. And in this house of representatives, everyone has equal amounts of representatives. So no state gets more than another. Makes sense? So they're kind of seeing it as a choice of being equal, no matter the size of a state's population. They're going to keep their representation the same, equal for all states. They thought this was fair. Now here we have a fight happening because they can't agree. So they need to make a compromise, un compromiso. Now the compromise has to be an answer to fix what they can't agree on. So both sides have to give in a little so this compromise can work. 
So a compromise is on the horizon so that we can get a new government. Now, the first compromise that they make is that they decide, do we get rid of the Articles of Confederation or do we keep them? So the small states kind of liked the AOC, but eventually they agreed, we need a new constitution. We need a new government because the AOC was weak. So AOC, bye, 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 you're gone. And they voted to do just that. So at this point, America is looking at the new constitution like, yes, we want a new government. So which plan won the argument? Well, hint, they both did because it's a compromise. Roger Sherman from Connecticut came to the convention and said, look, guys, we get that you both have different plans, but let's both get an answer together. And so instead of having one or the other knocking each other out, let's get both of you to have the answer that you want. So let's get that legislative branch, right? And Virginia, we're going to give you one house of representation based on your population. So that means that you get your answer for you. One house, one representation based on your population. So more means more. But now, on the other hand, we're going to give New Jersey, we're going to give you a house of representatives too. But guess what? We're going to make sure that all the representatives in here are equal. So there's not one more than another. This is a bicameral legislature. Two houses, but you both get one of your answers that you both want. So everybody's happy. Now we have this today in government. We have the Senate, which is equal representation. And then we have the House of Representatives on the right, which is based on a state's population. We have this in our government today. So great job, guys. Great compromise wins. Now, the big elephant in the room is the issue of slavery. Now, slavery is going to become a really sensitive topic. So the Southern states depended on slavery and they threatened to walk out of the convention because they didn't even want slavery mentioned in the constitution, which coincidentally, it's not mentioned in the constitution. So when the issue of slavery was brought up, Southern slave owners like Madison, as well as Jefferson, they spoke out against slavery and they wanted to see it addressed, fixed in the constitution. But Southern states were against this. They were totally not happy about it. Look at what James Madison says at the bottom. It did not lie between the large and small states. It lay between the northern and the southern states. Northerners knew that they needed to have all of the southern states to get this government that they wanted. They couldn't break up. So what did they do? Well, they came up with something that's kind of questionable, but it was a compromise called the Three-Fifths Compromise. So the Southern states did like slavery when it came to calculating their population representation. So in other words, if they counted the slaves, the Southern states could basically get more power, more seats, more votes in the House of Representatives. But the catch was that the Southern states would also have to pay more taxes. So what did they come to a compromise to? At the convention, they decided that for every five slaves, they would count five slaves as three people. Think about that. They would count five slaves as three people. And that's how we get the fraction, the three-fifths compromise. We're definitely going to debate this in class. Very questionable. But the North and the South were happy with this compromise, and they agreed to move on from slavery. That's three on the right for five on the left, three out of five. So on September 17, 1787, the delegates, they signed the Constitution. They agreed to send it to the states, hoping that the states accept it and ratify it or approve it. Unfortunately, not all the men approved. They didn't agree. Some didn't even sign. But a new government was on the way, and it was formed. Guys, I hope you got the best answers. I want to say thanks for being here. I'll see you in class. Keep learning. Y'all stay safe. All right.